For this class, instead of using a relational database, we're going to be using Google App Engine's data store. The Google App Engine's data store at a high level works the same way as the basic structure we've been talking about, like uh, we talked about with the spreadsheet. But instead of using a relational database, Google App Engine uses what's called an object database. An object database, as I said, is still structured data. It still supports the concept of having things like tables and fields. But there are two big differences. The first is that instead of having a fixed schema, the schema is a little bit more dynamic and you can actually change it over time. So you can create a table with items in the table with some fields and then later on you can add items with different fields or different data types. The second is that instead of using a API that is uh, only textual like SQL, like SQL, it instead uses an API that's built around Python's object-oriented programming. And this is where it gets kind of cool. Instead of feeling like we're creating tables, you feel like you're making objects. So let's look at our runners example and see what that would look like at a high level with an object database as we'll see in Google App Engine's data store. So what would the running database example look like in Google App Engine's object database? Well, what we'll do is create a class that represents each table. So instead of making a table and a spreadsheet, we'll take we'll make a class called runner and we will define some variables for each of the fields. We will have the runner's name and their email and uh, maybe their picture if we wanted to do that. It turns out we don't have to make an ID, the special kind of ID that we're going to use to join the runners and the activities because IDs are actually built into the object store. Then similarly we'll make a class for uh, each activity. Well, we'll make a class for activities with the fields that we want and then what we'll do is we'll make an instance of each class that corresponds to each row. So similarly our activities might have duration and distance and date. Again, we don't need to have a unique, we don't have to explicitly put an ID because if we want one it's going to be built in. Then what we'll do is we can make a new instance of runner. So we'll be able to say something like, you know, R1, runner1, equals a new runner. And then we can set its values. R1.name equals Ben. Set my email and my picture and so on. And then when we're ready to store it into disk to save it persistently, there is some built-in methods that will enable us to do that. For example, we can call the put method, which will store this runner that we just uh, created. And that's it. It is now persistent in the database. Similarly, we can make a new activity. Maybe a1 equals a new activity. Right? This makes an instance of the activity. We can set some of its uh, uh, properties, like its duration, and again, if this is a string, then we'll put it as a string. If it's a floating point number, then we'll put it as a floating point number. And so on. And we can write that. Um, we actually are going to want to do something to link these together. So what we'll want to do is actually um, store the runner's ID in the activity. So when I said we don't need to store the IDs, that's because that's as if we don't want to generate a new ID for each item. But if we want to store the runner's ID in the activity, then we will have to add that. So maybe what we'll do is add another field here called runner ID. And 
and then we can set that a one dot runner ID and then there's going to be a way to get the ID out of R1. Uh, we haven't, I'm not, I'll talk about that a little bit later, but there's going to be some method we can call to get the ID from R1 and we'll store that in the activities runner ID. And of course we could make more runners and more activities. But this is the basic structure and gives you a hint about what this is going to look like in Python. Like everything in Google App Engine, there is plenty of documentation to describe it. The Python Data Store API is described at this URL, which you can find pretty easily just by Googling Google App Engine Data Store. But you can go through here and read a little bit about it. And when you do, take a look at the way the um, documentation for Google App Engine is structured. There is a list of hierarchical headings over here on the left, and you can click on any one of these to learn a lot more detail. Right now, the data store is inside of storing data. But if you want to look at some of the other things, like services or tools, both of which get a little bit more sophisticated, um, you can go in there. Python reference can be useful to see a list of all of the uh, built-in functions. And of course, getting started where we looked at before is probably the best place to look at the beginning.